Hey everybody, Tim Evanicki here with The College Audition, back again with another episode of The College Audition Podcast. Today my special guest is Assistant Professor of Theatre Performance at the University of Evansville, Amelia McLean. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. So Amelia, we always like to get to know the person before the program. Um, so if you could please uh, take us through the, your history as far as your training and career that led you up to your time at Evansville. Sure. So I grew up in Richmond Rosenberg, which is a small suburb outside of Houston, Texas, um, or it used to be small anyway, not so much anymore. Um, And uh, I went from there actually to the University of Evansville. Um, I was a student there and I graduated in 2003. From there, I got my graduate degree at NYU's graduate acting program. And then I became and still am a professional actor working in regional theaters and on Broadway and um, in television and movies. Uh, I was in the middle of doing a run of the play that goes wrong on Broadway. Um, I had been, I was doing 18 months in the play that goes wrong on Broadway when I got a call from um, the faculty at the University of Evansville asking if I wanted a break to come and guest teach at U of E, U of e with my husband. Um, We had a a three-and-a-half-year-old at the time, and I was very excited about the opportunity to return to my alma mater and teach, and also to be able to put my son to bed seven nights a week. (laughs) (laughs) So we took advantage of that opportunity, and we went back to Evansville, and my husband teaches directing and directs plays there, and I teach acting and also direct plays there. And um, the first semester was just a guest appointment, and then... We stayed on for another guest appointment, and then when they started a search, we decided we would apply and went through that process. And next year, we will begin our fifth year teaching there. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And are you also involved in the recruitment uh, for the program as well? Yes. Yes. I, um, I would say I probably, this year was a little different. I took a leave this year and um, performed in To Kill a Mockingbird on Broadway. Um, while it was happening before Omicron got to it. Um, But, uh, you know, I was still able to watch a whole lot of the auditions this year because a lot of them were virtual. So Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of days watching recorded auditions and nights doing a play. Um, But for the most part, I would say that uh, Charlotte Cowden and I probably do, who is the chair of the department, we probably do 90% of the acting auditions together. Mm Mm-hmm. So what is the name of the degree or degrees that you oversee? Well, we, uh, I would say I oversee the BFA and BS, um, which a BS comes with what's called an associated study, and we can talk about that more later, mm-hmm. um, of theater performance. So they're both BFA theater performance and BS theater performance. Great. Correct. Um, well, we're about to transition into talking about the program itself. So before we get into specifically what the program is, tell us what the difference is between a Bachelor of Science and a Bachelor of Fine Arts in theater performance. Sure. So they take all the same acting classes. They audition for all of the same plays. Um, I like to say in my acting classes, unless I am um, a student's advisor, I have no idea whether they're getting a BFA or a, a BS. But the BS comes with what's called an associated study, which is 21 hours in... Um, outside of the theater department. Um, And unlike a minor, which has prescribed classes that you must take and fulfill in order to receive the minor, you can sort of choose your own adventure. So you can get an associated study in psychology and history where you take, you know, I don't know, 15 hours in um, psychology and six in history. Or we have um, a really amazing program at the University of Evansville called Change Lab, which is where students identify something that they think needs to change in either um, on our campus or in our community and then they work with a faculty mentor to go about creating curriculum that implements change and our students get really into that so a lot of them take a lot of change lab classes as their um, uh, to fulfill some of their associated study requirements Mm -hmm. but as far as the classes they take within our department the BFA and the BS take the same classes. There's more wiggle room for BFA students to take more theater classes. Um, So, you know, an actor might take costume design or scenic design. Um, But as far as the acting curriculum, they take all the same classes. That's really interesting. So is the BS um, an audition program as well? 
Absolutely. And we don't even ask um, our students to pick which one of those degrees they would like to pursue until they're about halfway through the second semester of their first year. So they just come in and get to explore the university some, and then they get to decide, actually, I think I'm going to choose this, or I'd like to go this track. And sometimes we have students who change their mind, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> who get, who get um, to their junior year or the end of their sophomore year and say, actually, I've taken all these classes and I think I could be done with my associated studies. So why don't I just get that degree? Right. Um, and because the acting tracks are the same, they have the flexibility to be able to do that. That's really interesting to hear uh, you say that because I think that with so many students going into this and researching and wanting to go off to school to study either theater or musical theater, there is um, that BFA is held to such a higher caliber when it's not better. It's just different. Um, and it's just something else, a, another way that you can, a different path to the same end. Let me, let me say it that way. Um, and, and it's, it's right for some students and it's not right for others. And I think it's great that you're not, requiring the students to declare that until after they've spread their wings in the program a little bit first. So that's really wonderful to hear. So um, if you had listened to any other uh, of our episodes, you would know um, that I like to put our guests on the spot a little bit um, and ask for, oh, you're hiding. I guess you haven't listened to any other episodes. No, I have. have. Uh, Okay. (laughs) So we're looking for your 60 second or less elevator pitch on the program. Um, Tell us why students should consider Evansville? Well, I guess my 60 second pitch is a little personal because because I'm a graduate of the program, right? So I would say personally that I came to the program and it is where I discovered my artistic family, right? It's the people that I still make art with when I'm making my own art. Um, I'm lucky enough to get to work with them sometimes professionally too, but they're also the people that I have over for Thanksgiving. Our kids play together at the park. Um, we, we are a family, right? Um, but I would also say that we are a department that is interested in students that are incredibly curious and generous and have lots of interests. Um, and you know, part of the reason why I think we allow students to go back and forth between BFA and BS or to explore before they choose those things is because the kind of student that we're looking for is a student who is also academically strong and has other interest because we think all of those interests feed the artist and make them better artist, right? Any history class you take is going to make you a better actor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and so I think that that's sort of who we are and what we do. Mm-hmm. So as a freshman um, acting student or theater performance student coming into Evansville, um, having not yet declared which degree I'm going toward, what does my first year look like there? Well, we do things a little differently. A lot of places will have you come in and take a lot of gen eds and then slowly you start to take your theater classes. But because we build into our curriculum Um, our study abroad program, which is in Harlaxton College, which is 40 minutes north of London, and 96% of our theater majors go and study there one semester of their sophomore year. Hmm. And while they are there, they just take gen ed classes because we want them to explore and go see theater everywhere, but we don't want them trying to take an acting class. So we front load our theater classes, and in that first semester of your freshman year, you're going to be taking all theater classes except for one. Um, And so you take acting classes and you take either color and design or you take costume construction and makeup. You take survey and analysis of dramatic literature. You take that one gen ed class, but you're taking all of these classes with your cohort so that you really get to know each other. You have a sort of built-in study group and, um, and you're getting to know the department and all of the theater faculty um, as well as the university, but you're really focusing on that theater core in the first year. Um, and then you make up those gen eds when you are studying abroad at Harlexton. So let's also chat about the performance opportunities for them while they're there. If you can take us sort of through the four years, um, are they allowed to perform their freshman year? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, we take 16 actors a year. Um, uh, we're a very small program, but we take 16 actors a year. And 
We believe that if you are um, the kind of student that we are looking for, that you know how to do a play. And we're going to let you do that the second that you get on campus. We actually have auditions every semester on the first day of classes. Um, and everybody auditions for all the plays in that semester, including the first years. And um, then we cast the plays for the semester, and everyone can only be in one play per semester. And we do that for a couple of reasons. The first is that we don't want the juniors and seniors to play the lead of every play. We believe part of what we have to offer is that as a first year, you are going to be acting in plays with seniors, right? That that's part of the learning and growing opportunities that we offer. Um, and the second is that it's challenging to be in class all day long and then be in rehearsal in the evenings. And we want to make sure that you are doing that for part of the semester, but then the other part of the semester, you're really focusing on your schoolwork and making sure that you're keeping um, your academic grades where they need to be, right? Um, but absolutely, so there, we audition for the plays every semester. In addition to the plays, we also have two directing classes every semester, and the students are cast in those plays as well, so they're working with student directors um, on scenes that are in rehearsal and performed either for the theater department or for the class. Mm -hmm. And then you also have your uh, acting classes that you're working on in all of those scenes as well. So um, it runs, and we also have something um, in the department that usually happens about every other semester called Rogue and Peasant Aces that started and was part of the, the change lab, a change lab course that I was speaking about, but it they um, take Shakespeare scenes and devise work around them and take them into um, middle schools and high schools in our area and perform them so that the students are having an opportunity to introduce people in our community, some of which to theater that have never seen theater before, mm -hmm. right? My favorite quote is that a kid said, it's like a movie only in real life. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, yes, that's what it's like. So uh, there's also an opportunity to engage in that performance opportunity as well. Great. Uh, what about for students who want to include a little musical theater into their theater curriculum? Are there, is there an opportunity for voice lessons or dance classes or anything like mm -hmm. that? So you can take a private voice class every semester that you're at the University of Evansville. Um, you can also engage in choir and there are acapella groups on campus. Um, we do one musical a year. Okay. Oh, that's um, and great. all of yeah, and all of the students are asked to audition for that musical. And I like to say that, you know, half of my students in my acting classes are Broadway caliber singers and the other half would rather die than ever sing in front of people and we don't know which is which until we audition for the musical right <laughs> um, um, but we, we do not have um, dance that we offer we offer a dance class but it is more like movement for the actor and again it's you're going to be in a class with people who have never taken a dance class before in their life so we encourage our students who are really strong dancers and who have pursued that their whole life to um, work with studios outside of our department Mm -hmm. um, and I know that you spoke with Charlotte Cowden on your podcast, and I know one of the things that she said is that we don't try to be everything for every person, right? Mm -hmm. um, we are not a musical theater program. Um, if you're a person who really wants to go to school and uh, spend time tapping and taking jazz and ballet, we are not that school for you, and we're okay with that. Mm -hmm. But we are a school for musical theater actors who really want to be strong actors first, and also want to stretch their um, stretch their voices and their vocal ability and be in a musical, but also want to be in plays. Are your productions open uh, to audition university wide or just the theater majors? Um, we, I believe that we do open our um, auditions for the university, but no one comes. <laughs> I think that that's the case. Um, with most, yeah, yeah, we've had we've had uh, some people audition, and then you know we we do our auditions at the beginning of every semester. We all audition in front of each other, and so it usually takes them about forty five minutes before they watch people, and they're like, "Oh, they're in a different place than I am. <laughs> I'm just gonna go back to my chemistry homework." Got it. Um, <laughs> um, and can you chat with us about any minors that are available? First, within the arts, and then minors that are popular for students that, that are outside the arts. Sure. So we have people that minor in creative writing. We have people that minor in art. Um, 
we have people that minor in business. Um, I think the business gets a little tricky because some of those classes are night classes, which conflicts with um, with rehearsals. And so again, mostly students say, you know what, I'm going to get an associated study in business where I can take those business classes that are during the day, but then not take these two that they require for the minor that are night classes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, But I mean, pretty much any department that offers a minor on our campus, you can get that minor as a theater major. Does the theater major schedule allow for a double major? Um, There have been people that have done it. It requires a very um, dedicated student, I think. Um, And sometimes it requires an extra semester or an extra two semesters. but there have been people that have done it. It's just very challenging. Right, of course, of course. Um, let's chat now about, other than yourself, of course, some notable alum uh, or faculty that they might get an opportunity to meet while they're there. Sure, so um, I will say if you're interested in our alums, our website is an excellent resource for you. Um, I can give you some big names, but if you're, if you want a more thorough list, that's a good place to check. Um, you know, we have my classmate and very dear friend, Rami Malik, who, uh, won an Oscar. You might've heard of him. Um, uh, Rettina Wesley, who was on True Blood and is now in Queen Sugar. Um, let's see, we have Toby Amwamir, who was just in the Matrix movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dee Dee Lovejoy, who was on The Wire. Um, uh, uh, Carrie Preston, who is also on True Blood. Um, we also have a lot of design and technology majors that um, are designing for television and film and theater. Uh, Jacob Clymer is auditioning freelance, I mean, um, designing for operas all across the country. Um, and then we have a lot of very successful theater managers. So we offer a theater management degree, which is a degree that I certainly didn't know existed when I was auditioning to go to schools. But um, it's basically the business side of the arts, and they take half of their classes in the theater department and the other half in the school of business. And then they graduate and become everyone's bosses. <laughs> They're the people <laughs> that graduate and immediately have a job in the arts. Um, and we have graduates of the theater management program working at Lincoln Center and all the Broadway theaters, Roundabout Theater Company, Signature Theater Company, um, uh, the Denver Center. So, you know, they're they're all over the place. Um, but yeah, I also recommend just checking out our website and looking at a more comprehensive list. Sure. Can you talk to, about some other key faculty members that the students will uh, come in contact with? Absolutely. So um, as far as the acting faculty, um, Stacy Yen teaches with me, who is also um, has a graduate degree from NYU um, and her undergrad from Brown. Um, and she is a very successful actor in theater and television and film as well. Um, Wes Grantham is on the acting faculty and as well as um, the directing faculty. And he uh, was an associate on Broadway for a very long time, also directs regionally. Um, and uh, we have Eric Rentschler, who is uh, our scenic designer, who was an associate on Broadway for a very long time and direct uh, and designs regionally. Same with Sarah Smith, our costume designer, and Stephen Bulmetis, our lighting designer, is the same. Uh, we have Diane Brewer, who is our amazing theater history professor and dramaturg, who often works in new play development. Um, I'm trying to think, I hope I didn't leave anyone out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I should have made a list. That's um, okay. Yeah, and then, and then Charlotte Cowden, of course, our managing director and department chair, who um, is an incredible mentor and a wonderful mm-hmm. member of our faculty who helps guide and um, our department and our students. Right. Talk to us about how Evansville uh, prepares the students for the transition from college to a professional career? Sure. So basically, we spend all of senior year working on that. Um, If you're a design and technology student, a theater management student, a stage management student, you take a portfolio class or a senior seminar class, and then you're working directly with your mentor to help make sure that you're prepared to go in um, and interview for those positions, as well as um, 
you know, faculty members mentor students on programs that they should apply for, internships they should apply for, jobs they should apply for. And because our program is small, we really have hand, you know, we're, we're hands on in that transition. As far as the actors are concerned, um, I teach the first semester of senior year acting class, which is um, audition techniques in the business of acting. Um, I'm very fortunate that I'm still an actor, right? I'm still a working actor. And um, the audition process is constantly changing. The pandemic has really changed the way that auditions happen professionally, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I feel very lucky that I belong to a department that allows me to still be engaged with the professional world because otherwise I wouldn't know how much it has changed. Mm -hmm. But we spend that first semester of senior year working with students um, to make sure that they understand how the business works, right? That it isn't just this um, elusive thing that exists over there that somehow you're trying to break into, even though it feels impossible, that there's actually steps you can take to help yourself be in the community that is the theater community. Um, and so we talk to them about their place as an actor within that business and how they can work to market themselves and to get auditions. And then once they get those auditions, how do they make sure that they have a process that sets them up for success and that when they go into the room, they're gonna get the job, right? Okay. Um, and so we dedicate a whole semester of acting class to that. And then in the second semester of acting, we, um, we help them create their own work, right? Because that way they're not just coming out of school and waiting for someone to decide that they get to be in a show, but they understand how to keep their artistic tank full, even if nobody has offered them the opportunity to work professionally yet. And also I know, right, uh, that uh, you're gonna meet a casting director, you're gonna meet an agent, and they're gonna say, great, it's so lovely to meet you. Uh, let me know the next time you're in something and I'll come see it. And if you're creating your own work and generating your own material, you're able to say, well, actually, I'm doing a thing in the basement of a bar. I'd love for you to come. And they will, if they're interested, is the truth. They just mm -hmm. will. Um, and so, you know, we're really trying to empower them to understand in their senior year that they can do it. It just requires work on their part and, and helping them understand what that work looks like. Is there a, a showcase of sorts or, or that you do with your acting students at the end? How do we get them in front of industry? We do not do a showcase. We bring in a lot of guest artists so that they get to work with people that are professionals. Um, but I, I don't know. I spoke to several agents when I was coming in. It was one of the things that I was like, I don't know, should we do a showcase? And every agent I spoke to said, there are so many of them, we don't really go. <laughs> Um, and really what they do is that they give it time to see who figures out how to, to work for themselves and get in rooms. And then those are the people that they want to work with, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the people that have, you know, have figured out how to meet um, people in the industry, have figured out how to get into audition rooms on their own because you want you have to be proactive or it's not going to work. So mm -hmm. I just am not sure that a showcase is worth it. But, well, but I also say to students, I would ask people, if you do a showcase and you get no response, what other resources are you providing your students with to help them be prepared to go into the professional world? Mm -hmm. And I mean, you, you definitely listed off quite a, a list of success stories from your program. So you're doing something right, even if, if a student might say, well, they don't have a showcase. Not all schools do anymore, especially post pandemic, not all, stu uh, all schools do. And that shouldn't be looked at as, um, as a negative, it's just a different approach. And again, you have to sort of weigh all of the things that a school, that a school is offering you and, and make sure that their approach is, is fitting with what you're looking for. Um, but I tend to agree with you that, that the showcase, as we know it, is a thing of the past anyhow. Um, so it sounds like that, you know, this is just a different way of doing it. And that's wonderful. Um, tell us a bit about um, the campus and the area where the campus is. Um, tell us a bit about Evansville. Sure. So Evansville is right on the Ohio River. Um, we like to say if Indiana is shaped like a boot, we're in the toe. Um, so we're right on the Ohio River, sort of halfway in between St. Louis and Louisville, Kentucky. 
Um, it's a town of about um, 180,000 people, so it's a little bigger than it sounds. There's because it's on the river. It was you know it's a river town. There's a lot of really wonderful history. It has a beautiful downtown with cobblestone streets and um, beautiful historical buildings. Um, the campus itself is one big city block, so it's in a residential neighborhood. Um, and, but you could walk the perimeter of it, and it is a mile. Um, so it is a small university with a very small, homey feel. Um, it's beautiful, but it's it's smaller. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, Evansville has wonderful museums and a philharmonic and um, wonderful cultural things for you to do. Also, if you're craving a city, you can get to Chicago in four and a half hours and St. Louis in two and a half and Louisville in an hour and 20. Um, so it's centrally located if if you're if you feel like I just have to be in a big city for a minute um, but there are not a lot of distractions as a student which is one thing that I really appreciated when I was there um, that I got to study at a wonderful program but also really focus on what I was doing mm -hmm. and what I was there to learn that is nice uh, you you don't want those I, I went to school in New York City I certainly know there's a lot of bright, shiny things in New York City that pulled me away from my studies at times, and you really have to have probably more, um, what am I trying to say, not commitment, but more maturity maturity than I had, uh, let's yeah. be honest, at 18 me years too. old. Me too. <laughs> me too. I went to graduate school in New York, and still, you know, it was wonderful, but I was like, oh, if I had done this for undergrad, I don't think I would have made it. Yeah. I would have been very distracted but it just depends on the person again um so let's switch gears and talk about the audition process um first question i ask everyone do you pre-screen we do not so then walk us through what the audition process looks like for evansville Sure. So if you're coming to our campus or doing one of our auditions where you've signed up for us as opposed to just us seeing you first at a, a cattle call audition, um, we, ha we ask you to do one classical piece, one contemporary piece, and 16 bars of a song. And, um, and again, that listening to you sing is not about seeing if you're a Broadway caliber singer, but more just to hear where you are with your voice and and where you are in using your voice, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we try really hard to be a very friendly, nice room where people walk in and they genuinely feel like we are just interested in them doing the best work they are capable of doing that day, right? Um, so we try to give each student 15 or 20 minutes so that they can do their audition and then they can chat with us and we can tell them about the program and they can ask questions. Um, but we're very laid back. We always ask people to take their time. Um, and we just want, like I said, to see the best work they're capable of. Mm -hmm. And how many applicants or auditionees did you see last year? Oh, Lord. I don't, I, I, I'm not sure about last year. I, I would say pre pandemic, we see about 2,000 to 2,200. Wow. And last year, I'm not sure. <laughs> and. From that 2,000 to 2,200 applicants, how many offers are you making and what is your target incoming class size? So we're looking for about 36 students total. So we take 16 actors, four in a program um, we call theater studies, which is for students who have out outstanding academic ability and multiple interests in the theater. and that's really our most comprehensive degree. And those students come in and dabble in everything. So they take acting classes, they take design classes, they take directing classes, mm -hmm. they really get to explore it all. It's kind of like getting a B, it's a BFA, but um, you take more theater classes than even if you were getting a BFA as an actor. So we take four in that degree program. We take two in directing and dramaturgy. We take six in design and technology. We take three theater management students and three stage management students. Hmm. So when you said 2200, that was all encompassing for all of those. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, I would say that 75% of those are acting, but mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And in order to get to that number, uh, how many offers do you usually have to make? I would say, 
say um, 60, 65. Okay. Great. So how does a student get recognized and get one of those 60 or 65 offers that you send out? What are the, what are the things that you are particularly looking for um, that makes a student stand out? Well, we're looking for a student who shows us potential, but also shows some sort of connection to the character and the truth of the situation of the play, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then we're also looking for students that are good students. So we take students that have that are very academically strong and exceptionally talented, and we really do weigh those things equally. Mm -hmm. And we believe that if we can find those students, those 36 students a year, then when we put them in a room together, they nurture each other, they challenge each other academically and in uh, with their artistic ability. Um, and that that combination of, of, of 36 people is as much a part of the training as the curriculum itself, we think. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask a question that uh, I don't normally ask, and I usually send the questions ahead to everyone so that they can look at them. But um, it seems like a good opportunity to ask you as, as a professional actor and as, as, as someone who's um, selecting students for a program, what are your what are your tips for a student when they're picking, finding and picking their material for the auditions? The, 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 I'll be honest, the, of all of the moving parts of theater and musical theater auditions, finding monologues makes the students lose the most sleep and freak out. And, oh my gosh, how do I do this? How do I find monologues? And I have my ways that I, I, I usually tell them. Um, but I'm, I'm interested to hear you and, and, and what you have to add to that. Well, I would say that you want to find material that you feel really connected to. And that can be, you know, I'm not talking about that's going to make you cry every time. But, but material that you, when you read it or when you, um, I don't know, perform it for the first time, you think, oh, I really love this material. And that can be a really funny comedic piece, right? It's just something about it that you really love because the truth is you're going to have to do it over and over and over and over again, right? So if you don't love it and know what about it that you think is special, that's going to get really old really fast. Um, I, also, I also think it's helpful if especially if you're allowed to do um, multiple pieces. If one of your pieces is close to who you are as a person in some way, because um, you're a stranger to us. And so, whereas you might feel like, well, I don't know, it just feels like this character sort of is me. That's okay, because we're getting to know you, right? We're getting to know who you are and what you can do. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I would say, also that when you read it and when you're putting together your pieces having a very clear idea about what it shows people right like sometimes students bring in a, a monologue into my auditions class and i say well what what um attribute positive attribute do you have that you're showing people in this piece right like what are you trying to show us when you do a piece for us are you trying to show us that you can be vulnerable are you trying to show us that um you can be funny what are you trying to show us but also don't show us the same thing three times <laughs> you right. show us one thing in one piece then something else on the next one what do you feel about um, students bringing in monologues that are at such a heightened level of emotion? Um, do you feel like that can sometimes backfire? Or if you want to see them absolutely, you know, lose it in the, in the audition room, um, is, that, is that to their benefit? Or do you feel like that backfires? Oh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I have... I have been turned off by, oh, they're just screaming at me, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, the difference is um, are, if they're actually connected to what's going on, if they're connected to the circumstances that the character is in, are, 
and does does that emotion come from a place that feels like it is real in them yes. or is it just like oh i get to scream in this piece that's yes. great like again we don't need to see you scream we don't need to see you cry we don't need to see you stand on a chair we just need to see that <laughs> that the you chair. have con- the chair or please don't throw it please don't throw it um, <laughs> but we just need to see that you're connected to material and that um, and that you have a confidence in who the character is right? Um, that's all we're really looking for is yeah. whether or not you're really connected to the character and, and to what's going on in the scene. That's great to hear. I, my students will hear me repeatedly say like, we can steer clear of the angsty teen stuff. We, we get it. You're an angsty teen. You don't have to do monologues about death, drugs and divorce all the time. Show us that you're a 17 year old that we can stand to be around for the next four years as well. Um, and I think that that goes just as far. I absolutely agree. And uh, the same goes for overdone pieces, I think. Mm-hmm. I, I, you're probably not going to find a piece that we've never seen before. Right. But if you're going to show us one that we've seen 10 times today, then it better be the best version of mm-hmm. Hamlet that we've seen today, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because that's all we really care about. Our kids, do you, you, do you require a Shakespeare? We re- your- require a classical piece. And do most students bring Shakespeare when they hear classical? Yes. Do you feel like that helps or hurts? Or I, I really don't think it matters. Okay. I mean, I think that, and again, it's not about who can do Shakespeare really well. Um, it's just about gauging where they are with it, right? Mm-hmm. And th- there are lots of times that I'll say, oh, well, that person actually really understood that, even though there's nothing on their resume that would make us seem like they should, right? Or we could say amazing and classical piece really feels overwhelmed by, um, I mean, uh, very good in their contemporary, overwhelmed in their classical piece. So they just need training, right? So it's really just another piece of information for us. It's not about knocking everything out of the park. I always say that auditioning is a little like dating, and the fact that we're looking for people that we're interested in and they're looking to see if they're interested and sometimes it's a good fit and sometimes it's not and it's all okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Like we, we don't have to be the perfect program for everybody. We know we're not going to be. Um, but all we can do is say like, oh, we're really interested in you. And then they get to decide if they're interested in us. That's funny that you said that because in the, the past year with this last class, I stopped saying accepted or rejected and I started saying swiped left or swiped right. <laughs> It's and so they true, all understand. Though, isn't it? <laughs> because also, you know, I think that it, also students can get caught up in how many places did I get called back for? Right. How many places did I get in? And actually, none of that matters. You just have to have one perfect match. Mm-hmm. That's it. Exactly. You just have to have one match where they're really excited about you and you're really excited about them. That's right. all that matters. Right. Well, Amelia, um, I always end our interviews with asking our guests to share with us something that they're looking forward to. Oh, great. Um, My husband and I have started the summer off with a bang, and we are trying to see one or two plays a week here in New York. Um, And so far, we have succeeded. And if this new wave of Omicron doesn't mess it up, we are going to continue to see plays all summer long. And so I'm really excited about that. And I'm excited to get back to U of E um, and continue to engage in, with our students in in-person plays yes. and bringing some theater to Great. Evansville, Indiana. And you bite your tongue because we are not going back to shutdowns. We cannot. I don't want it to happen. Don't say it. Don't don't speak that into existence. Uh, so if students or parents want to get to know more about Evansville, what's the best way to reach out? Uh, our website is the best place to reach out. You also are welcome to email me at a as an apple, M as in Mary, 99 at evansville.edu and ask any questions that you might have. If I can't answer them, I will forward them to the person who can. Great. Amelia, thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to seeing your face around here again in the future. Thanks so much. All right. Bye-bye. 
For more information on the exciting training workshops and masterclasses offered by The College Audition, please visit us online at www.thecollegeaudition.com or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok.